Welcome everybody. We're going to make a start now. Thank you for being so patient. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this week you have myself, I'm Kelly, this Hello. is my husband. I'm Dari. For those that don't know us. Um, yeah, we have uh, great news that Keji is on her way to Moldova. So keep her and Jordan in your prayers because as most of you probably know by now, Keji um, has a deployment to go and help uh, the families and the kids uh, near um, the Ukraine. And so, yeah, she's doing amazing, amazing things, right? So um, tonight you have us. We have also uh, Pastor Adi leading us in worship a bit later. And we also have the amazing prophetess Julie providing us with a word. So who's excited? Who's excited to hear come on, come well, what's going to happen tonight? Mm, come on. Come on. Raise He's excited. Hand. Are you excited? Do you know what? Even unmute yourself and for a quick second, just give us your loudest roar, your biggest whoop whoop. Yeah, woo 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 woo! Yeah. 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 We are excited. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amazing yeah. stuff. Great. Yeah, That's so right. um, so we're just gonna go in, into um the time of prayer and you know just just um you know just pray in Holy Spirit, just pray in tongues, you know, just um a moment that we just want to connect to God. Father, we just thank you for tonight. We thank you for tonight's service, oh Lord Father. We commit it into your hands, oh God. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come into every room connected, every person connected tonight, oh God. Father, we ask that you do what you do best, oh God. Father, we commit everyone that will be ministering tonight. We commit, oh God, everyone into your hands. We commit Prophetess Judy. We commit, oh God, Pastor Adi into your hands oh god father we ask oh god holy spirit let it not be just another meeting but let it be you know let there be a transformation holy spirit we welcome you holy spirit we just thank you we just thank you lord we thank you oh god for the week that has gone oh god father we thank you for gift of life over every one of us, we thank you for our family. Father, we thank you for protection, for divine provision over us. We thank you, oh God, that you, you, you protect us, oh God, that no evil, no evil be before any one of us. Father, we just thank you, oh God, for Rick Londons and Rick London members. Oh God, we thank you for believers across the world, Lord. We just ask, oh God, that today let us be able to just, um, you know, fellowship at your feet tonight. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We just thank you. We, we thank you, Father. We ask, oh God, that you fill us tonight with your power. Kande bo shinda la basondo lihara kasende. Lende bo shende kira basanda ka basondo lihara basende. Lende le keshira basende ke basondo lihara kasende. Ayi basonde lihara kasende le keshira basende. Holy Spirit, we just thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We welcome you, King Jesus, into our midst. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for which you are doing in our midst, in the city, in the nations. Lord, we just say we are grateful, oh God. We're grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful. Lord, we thank you, oh God, that today is going to be an amazing service, an amazing, an amazing time with you, Lord. Father, we ask, oh God, that you speak into speak into the life of every single one of us, oh God. Every single one that will be connecting, oh God, that will be connecting on YouTube, Father. We speak, oh God, that you, you feel us, oh God, that your presence, oh God, be with us tonight, oh God. Oh Lord, we just speak right now that, Father, we ask, oh God, that we, we remove ourselves. We just say that you take the stage. Lord, you take the state, Lord, you take the center state, Lord. Father, we ask, oh God, that we lift you high, we lift you high. Come on, come on, just, just start praying in tongues, start, start, start praying in tongues, start, start speaking to King Jesus. Like, commit today into the hands of God, commit today, commit yourself, oh God, that every one of us, oh God, will be blessed tonight, will be transformed, oh God. 
Lende Boshinda Rabasondo no Kushida Basende. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We bless you, mighty Father. Gracious God, we just bless you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We thank you. Lande Boshinda Kaba Sondo Diara Kasende. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Lord, we just bless your holy name. Father, we ask, oh God, that everything that we're going to be doing today, we commit into your hands, oh God. Let your spirit rest upon us. Let your presence be with us, oh God, in every room, every individual tonight, oh God. Father, we say, Lord, do something unusual in our lives tonight, oh God. Do something. Let there be a shift, oh God, in the atmosphere. Let there be a shift in our rooms. Let there be a shift in, in our souls, oh God. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We bless you because you're, you're gracious, you're good. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And, you know, as we were just praying, it was just occurring to me that we have so much to be thankful for and so much to be grateful for, even in the most simplest things or things we take like for granted, just even in the, the air that we breathe. You know, we just have so much. And even things that we didn't see that God is doing behind the scenes. So, you know, there's, there's things that have been happening for myself and Dare um, in regards to like new jobs and business and moving house and all these things. And just to give you even a glimpse of the things that God's doing, it just occurred to us this week that um, whilst we felt that we were prepared and we've had everything kind of set up in, right, we're going to, you know, do this, we're going to let this person know at that time, and we're going to make sure that even that acting in wisdom as to when to move, when not to move. And it just occurred to me that people, other people that could be involved have already made up their minds. But if not for God, if mm -hmm. not for God being behind everything, mm -hmm. he already had us like two steps ahead. You know, this one's where actually things drop in your mind and you think, God, I didn't know that was going to happen. And yet, you know, we think that we're planned. We think that we're ready. We think that we're organized, mm -hmm. but I didn't see that come in. You don't see how people could act differently or try and pull the rug out from under you. And you think, but if not for God, you know, he, he was so many steps ahead already. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I'm just loads of things going off thinking, mm -hmm. yeah, God's mm -hmm. done it. I started my new job this week. And I'm like, yeah, I'm here. God's done it. So let that just be an introduction to open the floor to anybody that wants to give glory to God right now and just give a one minute, 30 second testimony on something that God's done for you mm. this week. Yeah, just, just raise your hand if you've got testimony and I will meet you. If there's anybody that's got that God has done. Yeah, something that you even want to be thankful for with God, because that's part of our worship is just thanking him. So it's testimony time, basically, it's testimony time. Yeah, let's hear some amazing stories, some new new things that God's doing for you. Maybe even just a revelation, just a share, a quick, do you know what? Just realise how much God loves me after something that happened this week. Is there anybody? Are we all being shy? Yeah, I see a few people nodding their heads. Okay. <laughs> Marie. Hey, Marie. Mm. Let us unmute you. Hey, Marie. Hi. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I hope everybody's doing really well. Um, so I, I, I love what you shared, uh, Kelly, and uh, I give God all the glory. Um, I just wanted to share something about how um, God sometimes works in, you've prayed for one thing, but then he delivers exactly what you need in a different way. So um, for the last almost year, I was praying, I was in a team I've been part of for almost five years, and I was praying that he would move a couple of people around because they were behaving a bit funny. Um, and, um, you know, there were opportunities I could have been involved in that were blocked by those people. I had dreams about it. And then... Um, yeah, one day my boss just mentioned to me, we have this amazing new team um, that's being set up. Do you want to help set it up? Um, and so out of the blue, even though I'd been praying for a change in the circumstances around me, God was like, I'm just going to move you into a new place. So God's moved me into an entirely new team where actually all those opportunities that um, I was occasionally being blocked from because of people who are a bit competitive, 
that's where they're mainly focused. That's their main focus. Um, so I just wanted to kind of give God the glory. I've started on that team uh, mm. this week uh, to just say thank you, God, but also to say that God works. You pray for one thing and you think it's going to be the solution to your problem, but he has a very different viewpoint and he has a different way of delivering what you need. And it may not look like what you are after, but actually he's really answering your heart's desire and what you really need. So all praise to God. Uh, thank you. Amen. That is amazing. Thank you for sharing and congratulations on the move. And we just give God all the glory. Just thank you, Lord, for what you've done in Marie's circumstances in that situation. And that regardless of whether our hearts or even our minds are focused on, it has to be this way. But Lord, you're not a proud God in that sense where, you know, we have to get the vision first. You go ahead because you love us. And I thank you so much for that. That is absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. Is there anybody else that would like to share something amazing that God has done this week? Oh, <laughs> oh I'm trying to <laughs> you. <laughs> Gloria! <laughs> Sorry about that. For me, there, I forgot how Zoom works. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> Oh, my days. Yeah, it's a quick testimony. So um, my uh, first week of album launch ticket sales, I've had six people who bought tickets. So I'm like, thank you, Jesus. That's so wonderful. That literally um, within, um, yeah, just the first week um, that I've already started receiving sales. So um, thank you, Lord. It's like I'm, I'm not really known in the industry yet. So to have that is a really positive boost for me. So thank you, Jesus. That's mm. amazing. Mm. Bless you, Gloria. That's so awesome. You just reminded me that we need to buy our tickets as well. We'll do that after service, yeah? Amen. So good, so good. Okay, we're going to go to, we've got two more. Let's use two, two more. And we're going to go to... Tola first. Yay. I saw you earlier. You were saying, like, yeah, but we're a bit embarrassed. You don't want to be <laughs> I was just joking. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> what we're doing for you. Okay, mine is not like a um nothing to do with jobs or anything, but my daughter, who's um 12, um, we were just talking about what are you learning at school, and she says that they're learning um Sikhism. And, you know, okay, so just tell me some of the things that you're learning. And um, one of the things she mentioned is one of their six gurus, or whatever it is, they apparently went to um, the river. He goes to the river to wash. And then one day he kind of disappeared and they couldn't find him for three days. And I was just like, oh, that's a bit funny and a bit, you know, similar to somebody we know. So I just said to her, well, what does that mean to you? And what do you think? You know, so that's how we started talking about, you know, I said, do you realize that, you know, Jesus died on the cross and he was resurrected three days later? And a lot of these other religions tend to copy, you know, what we believe in and what we do. And it's just amazing. She's just like, oh, my goodness, that is so true. She's just like, next lesson, I'm putting my hand up and I'm telling them all. (laughs) And I was just like, I think for me, it's just the amazement of, A, how easy it is to talk to these children. And B, I just loved her confidence. You know, we we as the adults, we're still going, oh, how am I going to say this? And she's just like, no, I'm going to tell them. You know, so yeah, just, you know, an encouragement to everybody. These children are never too young. They're never too old. They, you know, they, they get it and they will go. Um, yeah, that's it. So I'm just really excited. Yeah. That's thank you. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. We are excited for you as well. And that's a great reminder as well, isn't it? Of like how, oh, yeah, we've just built up these boundaries and these walls and oh, when's the right time to say certain things when really we have, it's great news it's not even good news it's amazing news and so we should be able to share it with anyone and everyone that's amazing yeah lord thank you for using the children um daniel did you also have a testimony or was it were you clapping no you're good okay good <laughs> awesome okay so i think um we have pastor ade here he is going to lead us in some worship now so I hope you have your singing voices ready. If you can just um, obviously stay muted because Zoom isn't that high tech where 
it, it would make it sound amazing. So we're just going to listen to Ade. If I can find you, Pastor Ade, where are you? I'll wait if I can just... There Hello, you are. Pastor awesome. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Hallelujah. Amen. Can you guys Amen. hear me? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yes. you sound perfect. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. And can we appreciate um, Dara and Kelly for just, you know, taking charge today? We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Now let's turn our attention to the Lord and exhort his name. Come on, let's lift his name on high. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy of all glory, of all honor, of all adoration. He is right there where you are. He is right there with all of us. We exalt your name, Jesus. Yes, God. And who is like you, Lord, among us? Matchless love, beauty, and lives with us. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, your cup that won't run dry. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty, endless work. And nothing in this world will satisfy, no. You're the cup that won't run dry. Yes, Lord. Your presence is heaven to me, oh Lord. Hey, oh, your presence is heaven to me. Jesus, yeah. and treasure of my heart and of my soul, in my weakness you are merciful, redeemer of my past and present wrong, oh, holder of my future days to come. Treasure of my heart, treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. Oh, Lord, redeemer of my past and present wrong. You're the holder of my future days to come. Oh. Your presence is heaven to me. Oh, your presence is heaven to me. And oh. i 
and worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb of Amen. Yes, you are holy, you are holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. We join the heavens. Our sons and daughters declare you are holy. We declare you are holy. We declare you are holy. We declare you are holy. And worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us, worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God, you are worthy, and worthy is the Lamb of What you are, just lift up your voice and worship Him. He is right there. Yes. Uh, we say you are worthy for all you've done. For all you've done. For who you are to us. You are worthy. Uh, for the very air in our lungs. You are worthy. For all the testimonies. You are worthy. <laughs> for being the righteous one, oh Lord. Join the elders before your throne, singing worthy. We join the elders before the throne, singing holy. Yes, we join the elders before the throne, singing worthy. We join the elders before the throne. host of angels to sing holy we join the host of angels to sing holy we give you all the glory we
sing it out. You Those seasons 
change your faithfulness remains. Sing it out. It's real simple. Say, say, I believe that I will see the goodness of the Whatever you're going through right now, say, I believe that I will see, yes, the goodness of the Lord. I'm confident no seasons change your faithfulness remain. Now sing this, sing this, say, God of my present, God of my future, you write my story, you hold it all together, God of my present, God of my future, you write my story, yes, uh, you hold it all So I believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord. I'm confident those seasons change your faithfulness remains. God of my presence. Yes, God of my future, you've written my story, yes, you hold it all together, you are God of my present, you are God of my future, you write, you write my story, Lord, you hold it, say you are the Alpha, you are the Alpha. I just really sense in my heart that there's some people here right in the middle of your story right in the part where you're not sure what makes sense and what doesn't make sense uh, and as we're singing the song is an expression of faith saying that you are the alpha we sing uh, he is omega yes uh, he's in the middle he's holding it all together saying you are the 
to him. Sing it up. Yes. Uh, you are Omega. You're in my middle. You're in my middle. Uh, you hold it all together. You are my Alpha, Lord. Yes. You're my Omega. Yes. Uh, you're in my middle. You hold it all together. You are the Alpha. Yes. Uh, you're our Omega. You're in the middle. You hold it all together. I believe that I the goodness of the Lord. I'm confident those seasons change your faithfulness remains your faithfulness remains Faithfulness remains. Your faithfulness remains. I want to hand over to God right now. Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just be in this atmosphere. Yeah, Pastor Andy, if you could just keep playing for us, that'd be great. Thank you. Let's just be in this atmosphere. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's begin to just speak to God. Just begin to just speak to Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence, Lord. We just bless you, Holy Spirit. We thank you. Glory, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for every word that you have released. We just come before your altar, Lord. Say we are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. Thank you, Lord. I just love when it's all about Jesus, when it's all about God, mm. when it's all about Him, and it really can release that weight of pressure that we often put in ourselves to have attained certain goals by a certain time and to be responsible for so many things. And yes, we, we are we are called to be responsible children. We are called to, you know, be as close to God as we possibly can. But I just love in those times, like Pastor Eddie was just saying about being in the storm and, you know, those of us that might be going through some tense times, just know that every opportunity is a lesson to learn something it's an opportunity to learn something new an opportunity for god to strengthen you mm -hmm. and in all of those things if doors aren't open if things aren't going your way or how you thought it was meant to be all i ever do is just remember that this is all about god mm -hmm. he's not going to mess up his own plan mm -hmm. he's not going to make himself fall short of anything so it must mean that you're directly where you want him to be where you, where he wants you to be, where he wants you in that moment to just seek him that bit more, which is why we're just giving you that extra space now to really seek his face. Mm -hmm. So I just want to give you a couple of seconds just to, if you're in that time where you're feeling like the walls are coming in on you, where you're feeling pressure, where you've even put pressure on yourself, sometimes it's not always the enemy. Sometimes we are our own worst enemy. I just want you to just give it all back to Jesus. Give it all back to God and just say, Lord, it's your story that you're writing for me. It's your story. It's me. It's you that I want to be obedient to. 
not what I've concocted, not what I thought it's meant to be. Just start to give it over to him right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Father, we just release your peace right now, Lord. Release your peace, oh God. Mm -hmm. Over every single one of us, oh God. We ask that your peace just go forth and fill us in every room, everyone connected, Lord. We ask for peace, oh God, to reign in the nations, Lord. Father, we just pray right now that your presence, your power that is so thick now, Lord, we ask for peace, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so Thank much you. for so such much. awesome worship. That Amen. was Thank so you. good. Thank you. Okay. So without any further ado. Okay. So. We, oh, you, it's your go. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So um, we're going to go, um, before I, I even, um, you know, introduce this person, I'm sure, you know, everyone here, not even if it's, if it's not everyone, we know uh, who she is. She's an amazing, um, she's an amazing uh, woman of God. Um, but bef before I, I do that, um, I would just like um, to just, you know, just pray and cover her before I introduce yeah, her, you know, just cover her in prayer. Lord, we just thank you, oh God, for your, for your daughter, Lord. Mm. We release your word, oh God, oh, over her, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, that as she speaks tonight, oh Lord. Father, that you speak through her mouth, oh God, that you take control, Lord. That as she bring your word tonight, Father, we ask, oh God, that it will fall on fertile ground in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that it will not just be a word that we will hear, but we will be doers of your word tonight, oh God. Lord, we ask that as she speak forth, oh God, Father, we ask, oh God, that you speak through her, oh God. Father, we ask, oh God, that you use her as your vessel tonight, Lord. Lord, we just speak, oh God, that Holy Spirit, that you take control, you take over, you take the will, Lord. You take control tonight, oh God. Lord, we just release your, your oil, oh God, over her, your anointing over her, oh God, as she speaks, as you have been using her, Lord. Father, we pray for more over her in the name of Jesus. And we just speak that, Lord, that tonight that we will hear you, Lord. We will hear you and we'll be able to do your will, oh God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We bless you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, without without further ado, I would just um like to introduce Prophetess Julie Lopez. <laughs> yeah. Let's yourselves just and 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 give yourselves uh give her a really welcome really big welcome shout in the it was your show. Yeah. welcome Julie Julie yeah. Julie Julie we thank we thank God we thank God she's getting herself ready it's all yeah, good just, yeah. <laughs> You just get Amen. Wow, well, I'm so excited. How to live in the prophetic. Yeah, we just um hearing I, I, the voice of God. Yeah, I just I just believe that you know there's something great tonight that God is going to release. And you know, just just open your heart, open your heart to receive, you know, tonight. Um yeah, we just thank God. And um, yeah, we just bless God. We thank God for um who he is and what he's doing in our midst um yeah. okay so i think she's a couple of minutes okay why while, while we're waiting for uh prophetess julie um is there i know that someone raised their hand for testimony is there anybody that just want to you know quickly share one minute testimony while we're waiting for prophetess julie to come on um anyone that just want to share be quick. Okay. So um can I share a revelation yeah, I had this week? 
So I was contemplating on the ideas of like around salvation and just how evangelism has looked over the years and just been asking God about, you know, how to kind of spice things up and what he sees as like evangelism, basically. And I was looking at all the different kinds of people, you know, where they're at and, you know, anything from like homeless to, I don't know, our work colleagues to those that like, really didn't believe in anything spiritual at all and all these, and it, it actually just blows my mind about, you know, where people are at, what it's like if, if they don't even believe there's anything spiritual in this world or, and this, I think maybe um, paints the picture a bit clearer, but those that are like homeless and stuff, I'm like, Lord, what is it? that like, we always go to them and we feed them and we show them certain things, but what is it that make like that will cause them to just kind of like grab you by force and just run with it, right? Run with you, like really want to get like close to you and get in a relationship with you. And one thing was about decisions. And so he's been speaking to me a lot about how important our decisions are. And often people, because I have, I have this ability and tendency to go off in like a fantasy world sometimes where I imagine the world as being perfect. And so all these questions kind of led to that where I did feel God say, it's not only I am perfect, mm. people aren't perfect. Mm. And he said, think of all the decisions and mistakes and the wrong things that you've chosen to do. And, you know, that, that's them as well. And you've got to understand everyone's got different upbringings. And everyone's mm. got different values and different perspectives on the world. So it really caused me to feel less pressure in that sense to be like oh we need this like perfect world where everyone is operating like 100 percent, but just to give grace for that and also understand that how we can be on this pendulum swing of being like super like everything spiritual and then we can go to everything's like just natural so then it just turns into decisions and no just living a good life and there's no prophetic and no nothing but just that merging together just marrying those two things of understanding that actually they can encounter God today, mm. but mm. they just might make the bad decision of just going, do you know mm. what? I'm actually okay. A rich person, even I've got all this stuff. I've got all my money. I don't need that. So yeah, I just felt to share that, that the mm. key word for me this week was people have their own right, free will to make their own decisions. Mm. And so I just want you to kind of ponder on that in your own life like what kind of decisions have you got in front of you right now what kind of decisions are you going to make in the future how is that going to impact you how is that going to impact other people and also if you're evangelizing to people understand without kind of too much bible bashing or feeling upset i know i used to feel like that i feel like, oh they didn't know i they kind of accepted Jesus or I think they weren't quite ready to accept him. Did I do something wrong? No, just understand that you just planted a seed and you've just given them a memory, perhaps that someone else will come along and say the same things, but it's all about mm. you know, the power to, to show God, to maybe prophesy over them, maybe love them in a different way. Maybe mm. even like me and Derry were talking about generosity and giving earlier and just how, you know, maybe surprise them, give them 10 pound, 20 pound and say, because it's, it's from God. All these different ways of giving a message will help their decision to come to Christ. Amen. So yeah, making decisions, make, make good decisions. Amen, hallelujah. So yeah, so I, I'm just going to introduce um, Professor Julie. I'm, I'm, I believe she's here now. So uh, oh, can we yell again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I want to do that. You know, just welcome her. I want you to just, you know, like, just love on her. You know, so, Prophetess Julie, and welcome. And just grow and Let's welcome her. Woo! 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 Welcome, Woo! welcome, Woo! welcome, Woo! welcome, Woo! welcome, 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 welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> oh, did you change your name? <laughs> oh, here she is. Yay! Hello everyone. I'm sorry for <laughs> not joining when you guys were so excited to have me here. I'm sorry. I'm here, so thank you so much, Kelly and Daddy, for that 
introduction as always amazing thank you guys for um joining today um for being here our pastors pastor kesia and jordan she is heading now to romania i think it is so um it would be good if at the end um we can we can just pray for her we just come as a congregation and pray for her and cover her so it would be nice if we have some time at the end to do that for her and for the rest of the team um i'm excited to bring this word tonight is about prophetic lifestyle because everyone um wants to embark in this journey even like people that are prophets that say like and what next i believe that i have been called to be a prophet that i have a prophetic gift but what is next i don't know my sound is too high let me know please i always like to have music in the background okay good um and then people say um and what next how can i live a prophetic li lifestyle like what are the signs and i believe that there are a lot of things that we can do as individuals as a family um but today i want to speak to you guys about here about uh prophetic lifestyle like what is prophetic lifestyle like how can i embark in this journey if i have been called to be a prophet if i have been called to uh, be a uh you, you know move in the prophetic and the first important thing that we need to understand is that if you have jesus in you you already have the prophetic dna of jesus so you should be already be a prophetic person because the holy spirit is prophetic so if the holy spirit is in you literally you can move in the prophetic and each one of us should be moving in the prophetic and we should be having a prophetic lifestyle so what is a prophetic lifestyle so the first thing is that that we find is that a uh, a uh, a prophetic lifestyle is being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. The same thing if you have the DNA of Jesus. So following uh, um, the lifestyle of one who did only what he saw the Father doing and only said only what he heard the Father saying, that was Jesus. We see that in John 5, 19, that he, only, that, that he did what he saw the Father doing and said only what he heard the Father saying. So that's how uh, we can uh, start having a prophetic lifestyle when we uh, uh, start to be a disciple of Jesus and I believe that prophets are for today like we are for today it's not like some people say like oh prophets and apostles you you know that's in the uh, that, that have died when the prophets and apostles die that is not true because I believe that part of the role of the prophet is to raise up a community of believers who live a prophetic lifestyle you know this is not just a uh, um, for a few prophets you, you know the holy spirit doesn't decide the desire give to have a prophetic lifestyle just with a few good prophets he longs for an entire prophetic generation for each one of you to arise for each one of you to love the true and to have jesus center in your life to have the character of jesus and release the fragrance of christ into every part of society so that is what we should be doing because we need to understand that prophets doesn't they don't point at themselves but they point to jesus they point to the one and only jesus so if you see you know a prophet that is pointing at itself continuously run from there because prophet our, our our main mission is to lead people to jesus is to not point at ourselves but to point at jesus because he is worthy because he is the rich reason that i live and you should live for amen so how um as my experience right like how did i uh, uh, started on my prophetic journey so i believe that uh, for, the, for those of you that uh, know my background, I come from the occultism, so I had gifts since a really young age that I didn't know how to articulate. And even um, as a Christian, when I became Christian, I still didn't know that that the Lord called me to be a, pr a prophet. I didn't know. I just thought that I feel that I don't fit in in this place. Um, the Lord put me in a place where I... I, I grab right but sometimes i used to feel weird because i used to see dreams and visions and discernments of demons and these things and people didn't understand me so i just thought you, you know maybe maybe i'm weird maybe i'm not part of the but something really like special that happened is that um people put uh, god put in my life 
a people and you know without looking for them the lord position leaders and prophets around me that help me to grow and as i said like i didn't i didn't know that i was called to be a prophet but with each one of my leaders i grow in different areas and i, I and i was actually thinking when i met prophet tommy like he became my spiritual father he was a prophet and the holy spirit told me did you know that you have been trained and raised by prophets and i'm like and then i just started to think in all the leaders that the lord positioned me in my work with christ because when i was a, a, a witch i was trained to be a witch since i was 12. so i had different witches that were training me in white magic in black magic so and then now i here i am as a christian being trained by prophets and i just realized this like not long ago that wow the lord actually put prophets in my life to teach me and something that the holy spirit told me is that uh you all these years of being a christian with all these people you were growing in different areas like it helped me to cultivate a lifestyle of intimacy wisdom and revelation and this is what i'm going to be talking to you guys to, today the prophetic lifestyle is a lifestyle of intimacy wisdom and revelation so with one of the prophets that i had with one of the women that i had um she is a prophet right and she raised me and she trained me she held me and th and told me the importance of intimacy so with her i learned all about intimacy i learned all about holy spirit is your main source holy spirit is your guide he is everything you need to have reverence for the holy spirit this is why i got so frustrated when there was a song of holy spirit activate i just go like holy anger like how are you guys like you know like it doesn't feel like it's not like you can't just play with the holy i'm sorry holy spirit is holy and we should have reverence the same way that we have reverence for the queen right here in england how much more we shouldn't have reverence for the holy spirit we shouldn't play with the holy and we shouldn't be doing those things um but just particular like my revelation so i had with each one of, of them i learned that intimacy all about intimacy all about you you know learning to rely on the holy spirit of listening to his voice and then with the other person that that was the first person that i had i learned the basics of christianity i learned you know about um just just the souls and 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 all of that so each one of them taught me different things and now i came with prophet Tommy, and in these almost three years i have learned about the prophetic about prophesy about having a prophetic lifestyle about how to impact other people with what the lord has positioned in us because something that we need to understand is that you you know the church is not there to give you uh information sorry the church is not there to give you information but to help you to transform so many pe people think that the church is, is just there. You go there, it gives you information, and that's it. I'm sorry, let me give you one sec. I missed something here. Uh... Yeah, sorry, yes. Like, the church is not there to give you information, but, uh, but to prepare you and to form you information, right? So this is something that we need to understand when we go to a church. Are you just there sitting every Sunday? What's the purpose of you just being there? It shouldn't just be for you to go there every Sunday and live the same the, the same way that you came in. It's, you should be there and people should be training you, pr people should be preparing you because as, as a Christian, we haven't called to check the world. We haven't called in the different areas that you have been placed. You have been called to release the prophetic in the atmosphere that you have been set, setting in. So I believe that as prophets, as apostolic people, our mission is to train and equip people in the different areas so you can go out there and, and you know, and take over the area that the Lord um, has called you to. So those are the things that um, um, kind of like help me to grow um, in that prophetic lifestyle. So intimacy, wisdom, and revelation. So let's talk about the lifestyle of intimacy. And as I was doing this, something really interesting that I found out was that John. So I wanna start with John because the lifestyle of a prophet, of the lifestyle of, of prophetic people must begin with love. And this is something that I have been learning 
wow sis i literally joined rig nation love because um when i was reading about yon it's like a, a no one's life or writings better exemplify a lifestyle of love and intimacy than that of john and i believe that it was from that place that john also received and he kind of like delivered the prophetic re re revelation to the church that uh, about the second coming of jesus christ so it was from that place of intimacy and from that place of relationship so we need to remember that the keys like intimacy devotion faithfulness friendship with god are how you embrace the one who calls you and discover your calling so for those of you that are asking oh what's my calling i i, I see a lot of people that you you know they became christians and i myself because i like to speak with my own testimony because i believe that the, the most powerful teaching is the one that you accompany with the bible verse and your own testimony right so this happened to me as soon as i became christian i like what's my purpose what's my calling i want to know i want to step out i want to that's an error that we do when we become Christians, trying to find purpose straight away, trying to find calling. So if you want to know your calling and your purpose, start with intimacy. Start with intimacy. For those of you that are, you know, that just became Christian, stop looking for purpose and calling and start looking for intimacy with the Holy Spirit. So I just want us to look more at the life of John and you know John was the beloved disciple and I found some keys to have a lifestyle of intimacy from him so we, we know that John he was a friend of Jesus and he was the one that was at Jesus crucifixion I'm so sorry let me put this on he was the one that was at Jesus crucifixion and he was there for him all the time and I, I no wonder why I, like he has speaks so much in his writings about uh, the love and forgiveness of God and he was the only disciple to record the words of Jesus in John 15 13 John 15 13 that says greater love has no one than this the one the one that lays down his life for his friends so John he actually saw the crucifixion he witnessed you, you know the effects of the crown of thorns piercing you, you know the brow of jesus so he saw the face of jesus he saw the results of the you, you know 39 39 lashes on jesus back so john witnessed firsthand the nails piercing of of, of jesus hand and feet and he even heard that it, I, I was just like i like to imagine and kind of like teletransport myself to that moment and just see that and and you, you know john heard the desperate cries of jesus he was there he heard him crying for help and i believe that the sound of jesus words from the cross probably like kind of like echo like in john's heart and mind all his life imagine just being there and hear the savior the person that you have been really close to and you know something um important also that um that i found is that you know he was there but it says that also john lay his head on the chest of jesus at the last supper so you can see that it was such an special intimacy such a intimacy with the savior and i always think like like what was john actually hearing on the chest of jesus what was actually he, he hearing when he was just there laying down like you always do that when someone that you have intimacy right you always put your head with someone that you are really close to and you put your head like that and i just think like wow like john had such a revelation of love and forgiveness and all of that came from that place of um of intimacy and you, you know, John's journey with his Lord, with Jesus, took a different turn from, from, the, from the others. Like, you, you, you know, he laid his head, as I said, on the chest of the creator of the universe. And he was also giving the, you know, the care of Jesus' mother. In John 19, 27, John 19, 27, it says, I will give over the care of my mother only into the very best hands. And John was the one that, look after uh, 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 Jesus mother and 
I always wonder also what Jesus saw in John, what was different in him? Did he have an uncommon love for, for Jesus? What was the thing that made John so special? And uh, as I was checking John, I found, I found how, how many points? I found one of the things that I believe that was one of the things that, that mark John's life and made Jesus be so close to John. And the first point was part of this um, lifestyle of, of intimacy. The first point is John's radical surrender. So to have a life of, of intimacy, you must have a radical surrender. And I want to share something with you guys that I've been going through. And it's probably you guys are going to be probably the second people to know here. Like I wanted to share this with, with my inner circle, with my team tomorrow. But I, I think this is the place to, to, to share. And okay, I don't, I don't want to cry. I'm trying to hold it. Okay, so... um. So John's radical surrender. So we, we see in Matthew 4, 21, 22, it says, Matthew 4, 21, 22, it says, Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of CBD, I'm sorry for my pronunciation, CBD or CBD, and John, his brother, in the boat with, CB, uh, with their father, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. So they were at this boat, James and John, this John, with their father. We know the story. They were fishing. And what happened was that Jesus came. And what happened was that Jesus called them and it says that they immediately left what they were doing with their father and follow Jesus. So John, who was transformed into a passionate lover of God, he lost everything he knew in order to come into which he didn't know yet. And that is the cause of authentic discipleship. Like, do you realize the cause that James and John pay when they surrender to the new Lord? No money, no job, nothing. And this is when I want to share this because... Like, for those of you that, I mean, you know that I'm part of Rig Nation and something that the Lord has put in my heart since December in a vision, he, he told me, I saw myself walking in the streets of my country where I was born. Like, I was born in Colombia, but I wasn't raised there. So my culture is from Spain, right? Because that's where I was raised. So even though like I was raised in Colombia, um, I don't have, my culture is not, is not like that. Like, I know my country, I had visited a few times, but it's not like, you, it's not in my heart to live there or to move there, right? And as I was praying in December, I had a vision of me walking with my family in Colombia in one of these cities and I'm like oh lord what, what was that what was the meaning and I spoke to prophet Tommy and he told me I actually wanted to speak to you about Rick South America and I'm like and I'm like so what so you think that the vision that I had was related with Rick South America and he was like I don't know, pray about it and think about it. I share that with my husband, like, for, like, you know that he's not Christian yet. So I was like, God, if I share this with him, he's probably going to shut me down and be like, no, that's too much, right? So when I share that with him, the vision, because I share, that's part of the prophetic lifestyle, you share with the other person what you see, what you dream, because that's how they also see the manifestation of Jesus through your gifts, through what you share. So I share with him, I, I saw this, but I don't know if maybe like God is calling us to move there. And you know, because I didn't like the idea, I shut that down. I said, I didn't want to think about it. And I didn't want to, I didn't even want to think about, I don't want to think about moving there. I don't want to think about nothing. I have lived all my life in Europe. I have my children in here, the, the house where we are. I pray for this house. We have worked so hard. 
to come out of debts, to come out of, you, you know, three years ago that we were living in a tiny flat with no money. We have to look for coins to buy meal for our children. And I'm like, no, we work so hard to be here where we are. Even the TV, everything has cost us something, right? Has We have worked hard for, for each one of these things. So I completely block myself and I just stop asking God. And I used to just cry and be like, God, I don't even want to think about it. And my husband see me crying, but why are you crying? And, and I'm like, I don't know, I'm frustrated. I don't want to move, but I feel like I have to ask for confirmation, but I don't want to, right? And then it's been like, see, like three months since the, the, December. I told, Prophet told me like, how do I know if it's God's will, if it's the time? And he just told me, ask the Holy Spirit, ask him for a confirmation. And, you know, I have been going through a lot of warfare r- r- recently. And a few days ago, actually, today is Sunday. I think it was on Thursday or Friday. I I just entered into like two hours of just pure worship and intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And in that place, I said, you know what? I surrender all. This is why I'm crying. It makes me cry when I'm reading, when I'm reading how, you know, James and John, they surrender all. They you know they 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 lost everything that they had to follow jesus and to do you know his will and as i was praying i told god god i want to surrender all to you everything that i have is not mine is yours so i just release everything that i have in here even my children my family everything is yours I am here just to do your will and I don't want to get attached myself to materialistic things. You know that we have worked hard for these things, but I have also seen your grace and your love in every situation. So I was just praying. I also pray something specific. I pray, I pray, God, change my heart. Give me a heart of flesh and change this heart of stone. It was so clear. What happened was that I just live it like that. The same night I went to sleep and I just keep hearing the Holy Spirit like, grab your Bible, grab your Bible. And I'm like, why? So no, I just obey. I open my Bible and I remember I had a heart that says Ezekiel 36. And I'm like, oh, Ezekiel, what is this? So I just went to Ezekiel 36 and I just started to read the whole chapter of Ezekiel 36. And I'm like, Okay, because of my English, I like to see like more sim- simplified versions sometimes. So I grabbed my phone and I went to, uh, I think it was the message um, translation. When I open a Ezekiel 36 on my phone, it says, that was when I just completely broke, guys. Ezekiel 36, let me just open it. Back to your own land. As soon as I saw that, I broke and I was, no, I started to cry. I started to read the whole thing and the Holy Spirit started to talk to me about um, about um, prophecies for Colombia, about everything that he's going to do in the country. He started actually to give me a prophecy for Colombia. He also said, I will take you back to your own land. I will make the land uh, 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 give you what you need. He, he talk about finances, about prophecy for Colombia, for South America. And I'm like, I'm there in bed. Imagine, right? I just surrender all to him. So sometimes we, we, we need, we try to find clarity straight away, but sometimes clarity comes with journey. Clarity comes once you surrender all. I didn't even know where to start, but once I surrender all, clarity came. I, I I felt calm. And the next day, yesterday, actually, I shared that with my husband. And I'm like, the first thing, baby, I have this word. Blah, blah. Obviously, you, you, you know, he's not Christian, so he's not like, oh, yes, I meant. Obviously, no. I, he started to get really stressed. And obviously, he, he said, like, if, it, if, you, if, 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 if you have to do it, let's do it. But you know, but I started to see like he wasn't happy. I told him, look, if we are gonna have division, I'm not doing it because God knows that this is painful for me. But you know, um, but one of the main things for me is unity. That's when you know that is from God when you, everyone is in unity, right? So I went to sleep last night, like crying, like, oh God, this is so hard. You know, we started to check about the visas and there are issues with the vaccines. And I'm like, God, this looks so hard. And today he wake up and he's like, look, if we have to go, let's go. It's fine. And it was like the whole atmosphere completely changed. And I messaged Prophet Tommy and I told him, look, um, 
I believe that God is calling us to go. I already, even last night, I had a dream that I was prophesying to someone from the government. So everything is coming with when I decided to surrender all. When I decided, like, you know what, I might lose some things in this house, like finances or maybe the car, that we, like all of that. But I'm like, I want to surrender all. And I know that, you know, your will be done. And I like the Lord is already like showing us like what do you have to do? And something that the Lord told me yesterday when I was talking to my mom was that you know what an ambassador is? He says that we are ambassadors of Christ. And I'm like, God, I am an ambassador. I'm gonna you are gonna take me to Colombia as an ambassador of your kingdom. And I'm like, and I'm like ambassadors when they go to other countries they get paid everything for them the children get their uh, the school fees everything and i say god i step into that anointing and i believe that i am an ambassador of your kingdom and because i am surrendered all not only me my husband because it's a sacrifice for him because he has a job in here and now he needs to leave and now there's a lot of things and now like because I, I am stepping into obedience and surrendering all. I believe that the ambassador anointing is going to come to our lives. Where you, God, are going to provide and pay for our house. Where you, God, are going to provide for my children's education. Because I am an ambassador of your kingdom. And I started to have the mentality. And I'm like, and my mom said, wow, you are back. Because I was feeling like quite low for the last few weeks. And my mom said, you are back. And I knew like, I, I, I'm back. <laughs> Julie's back. <laughs> so... Um, so when I was talking about John and the intimacy with the Holy Spirit and when I was reading John and his radical surrender, I was crying because, you know, I, I, like, do you realize the cost that they pay when they surrender to the new Lord, to James and John? They surrender, oh, no money, no job, no understandable future. And they also hear the one person that they have been trained all their lives to honor their father. Can you imagine them leaving their father there in the boat alone for him to finish fishing and they decided to leave straight away and that when i was reading it i was crying i, I was like it's, i i feel the same like i don't understand what is going to happen then uh, you know right now we don't even have the finances we and i'm like I, and i can feel it like that's the price of surrendering all to jesus and something in john's and james heart said go and they left everything that they knew to become something that their minds could not comprehend. And James and John understood fishing for fish, but they didn't know what was fishing for men. And when I was reading it, I was crying. I was like, God, it's, it's exactly the same. They left everything to, uh, 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 to, to become something that their minds could not comprehend. And they didn't understand. And I'm like, Lord, I might be in that place, but I surrender all. I surrender all and John and James they didn't understand and they went and they had a radical surrender to join an emerging new army of radical name and I think don't you think that John ever wanted to turn back and go home like I like I imagine that he would be like sometimes thinking like ah, I want to come back but when you have been exposed to the real thing there is no turning back when the Lord you know, when you know that you are there, like a, a, a few days ago, one of my uh, spiritual daughters told me, how do you know to, you always keep going, even in everything that's happening. How do you do it? How don't you turn back? And I just told her, told her, when you know the real thing, you can't turn back. When I remember where I come from, I can't turn back. When I say yes, to the commission in that day, when the when, when I got commission, I I gave my yes. I can't turn back. So th those are part of the things that we need to also under under understand. And is that that uh, uh, there is no turning back. And I believe that today the Lord is calling, like the merging prophetic army. Jesus said that no one can put his hand to the plow and look back in Luke 9, 62. So you must keep looking forward. I don't know what you might be going through, but you can keep looking like back. That is what John did. He keep looking forward. And this is what you and I, we must do. We need to be ready to jump out 
or our comfortable zone of our boat and we need to be ready like John to make a radical surrender and become a catcher of men and, be, and, and become like Jesus. That's part of the prophetic lifestyle. Surrender. And uh, in Revelation 19.10, Re, Re, Revelation 19.10, it says, I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears the testimony to Jesus. And I, and I believe that this re revelation that John had give us kind of like a concept, the central issue of, of what authentic prophetic ministry is. And it's all about worship God. Worship God and you will be walking in the opposite spirit from the, from, from the, uh, from that of this world. And as you wor worship God, like the great I am will inhabit in your praises and the Holy Spirit presence will be poured out on you. And I believe that the, the, the true heart of the prophet and the prophetic, uh, and the prophetic people is the testimony not of how great you are, but how awesome he is. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So do you want to become a true messenger of the Lord with fire burning in your bones? Then you need to leave Jesus dwell in your heart. You need to abandon any attempts to build your own kingdom or your own ministry. Forget about building your own empire and you need to build his instead. You need to worship God with everything. You need to consecrate yourself to him to be his holy dwelling place. So do you want to experience the lifestyle of a prophet? Do you want to experience the prophetic lifestyle? Well, it begins with intimacy. You need to surrender to Jesus and worship him. And as you surrender to Jesus in intimacy, you are going to find your calling and your purpose, which is not yours, it's Jesus. We don't have nothing, everything is his. It's not my calling, my purpose, it's his calling, his purpose, and you do a part in that. So there were, where you are like I haven't finished uh, yeah I still have a lot but I just want us to there where you are I just w w want you to close your eyes for a minute and I just want you to repeat this with me say father I present myself to you right now I surrender to Jesus as my Lord and Savior and also as my friend I lay down my life before you and I ask you that you pick it up and lead me on your paths for your name's sake. Heal my brokenness and make me whole. Thank you that you do not just tolerate me, you love me and delight in who I am. Breathe upon me and draw me closer to you. Like John, I desire to walk in intimacy with you. Lord, come and embrace me. Lead me into a more intimate lifestyle of love. I love you and I want to love you more. Take me on this journey to be more like you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So that was the first point and I need to finish quick. Second, lifestyle of wisdom. So I remember that I told you that in these years I have been learning about intimacy, lifestyle of intimacy, lifestyle of wisdom, and lifestyle of revelation. So lifestyle of wisdom is the second one. And for this one, we see the story of Joseph. Um, wait, give me one sec. We see the story of Joseph in Genesis 37. And uh, I believe that, you, you know, Joseph is, is one of the most remarkable characters in the Bible. Like, Joseph did not, he didn't start as a leader, wise, strong, you, you know. He didn't start, like, storing a food during the years of plenty to save the world from famine. No, he didn't. He could, like, he, he barely could articulate revelation and he wasn't even ready to govern in Egypt but Joseph learned wisdom. So this is the first one, lifestyle of wisdom. And what, um, I believe that what Joseph learned 
save his family and all of Egypt from starvation. So for those of you that don't know, Joseph, Genesis 37, you can read the whole story of Joseph there and how, you know, he was a dreamer and his brothers took him out, put his, so, like, sold him and he went to be a slave and all the process that he that he went through, right? And and uh, 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 so he learned what he learned, say his family and all of Egypt from starvation and he set the stage for the nation of Israel to grow from like 70 to more than 1 million people. And wisdom is not a gift, although like what a wisdom is, but the, um, the wisdom must be developed and gained through teaching and experience. And Joseph lacked both teaching and experience. And Joseph learned that he learned wisdom in the difficult place of trial and testing. You know, he dreamed, interpreted, then implementing the dreams of God, and he was promoted to a place of authority. And Pharaoh, I, I like if you read Genesis 41, 41, Pharaoh says, See, I have set you all over the land of Egypt. So God used what seemed like a nightmare to Joseph in order to prepare him for the manifestation um, of his own dream. And I have here a few poems with Joseph. I have one, two, three, four from this lifestyle of wisdom. And I'm gonna give them to you quick. First one, Joseph did not know the proper way of responding to revelation. So we know that, why do I say this? So this is why it's so impo important. He had a dream and he saw, he was young, he saw himself, you know, uh, as a, how do you call it, as a wheat or so, so, uh, something. And the other ones were bo like bowing at, at him. Then he saw the stars and all of them were like kind of like worshiping. So what he did, he had a revelation, but he didn't know how to respond to that. And what happened was that he went to tell those dreams to the brothers and they hated him for that because they were thinking that he was showing off and he was already his dad's favorite son. So he was showing off, he had a revelation, but he didn't know how to respond to it. So first point, Joseph did not know the proper way of responding to revelation. And I wonder what might have happened if Joseph had prayed before speaking about his dreams, right? So the key to remember about these mistakes that, G uh, that, jo that Joseph did was that the key to remember is to pray before you act. Prayer should always be your first act in response to revelation. So for those of you that have a revelation and you go straight away to tell, you know, their dream and to tell what the Lord is showing, pray first about it. You need to pray before you act. And that's what will happen to him, that he didn't know how to respond to that re revelation and all the consequences that he suffered because of that. Point number two, Jesus, Joseph learned wisdom through his failures. So if you want to embrace this walk, you need to learn wisdom through your failures and genesis 48 reveals that joseph learned to seek the wisdom of god in order to interpret these revelations properly it says that joseph um said to the baker and the cup bearer i hope i pronouncing the right cup bearer it says um do not interpretation belongs to god he easily interpreted both dreams which then turned out to be the key to his release from jail so when joseph was brought before pharaoh to interpret his dream pharaoh said i have here um i have heard it say i have heard about you that when you hear a dream you come interpret it and then joseph said it is not in me god will give pharaoh a favor a fi favor uh, favorable favorable answer so then Joseph was learning that it's not him, is 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 God, and that his revelation and his wisdom was coming uh, from God, and we can see here. So he learned from uh, the first mistake that he did. He had a revelation and he went straight away to uh, telling. Now he learned that it wasn't coming from him. That the revelation that he was having, the wisdom, it was coming uh, from God, and he was acknowledging that. So. Um, and now he, after all of that, we know that he became the ruler of, of Egypt and uh, and then um, 
Yes, and then he become, you, you know, he, he went a long way from becoming a 17 and immature in prophetic wisdom to become now one of the rulers of Egypt. So point num, 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 number two, Joseph learned wisdom through his failures. Number three, Joseph showed that the right attitude would keep him going in the right direction. Have you ever noticed that Joseph's character was impeccable while he was in captivity? You know, he turned away from the, you know, Potiphar's wife. And there is no record of Joseph complaining after he was accused and put into prison. There's no record of it. And instead, uh, we learn that Joseph found favor with the, with the chief of the jail who put Joseph in charge of the prison. And Joseph was respectful and kind. And this attitude that he had was visible to all. And this was this released favor from those in authority. And then when Joseph's brother show up, what happened? Joseph, t- like he tested them as a, and then, um, you know, he could have made their lives difficult. You, you know, like after all the suffering that they caused him and their father and all of that. But Remember, what was Joseph's response when he saw his brothers? Was he rage? Was he anger, hate? No, it says that he wept. Wept? I hope that's right. So something that we need to understand and learn from this is that we need to be careful not to harden um, against your gift and calling. Don't curse your sensitivity. Rather embrace it and let it make you. Like Joseph one who weeps over his brothers. So that's the third le- le- lesson that we can see. Joseph showed that the right attitude will keep him going in the right direction. So your attitude, your attitude, how are you behaving in what is happening around you? Are you having anger, rage, hate? How are you behaving? Remember that everything comes from a place of love. The first thing, a place of love. And the last point was Joseph did not let go of his dreams until he saw them come to f- uh, fulfillment. So I want you to understand something and is that the manifestation of your revelation will take some time. And Joseph was 17 when he first dreamed and then he was 30 years old when Pharaoh put Egypt under his rule. And he was 30 and then Jesus' ministry started at 30. So there is something there with the number 30 special. So. And then it was another years before he would see his brothers bow before him like like um, like in the dream. And you know, I understand that sometimes like we get impatient when we are waiting for a dream to come to pass and waiting for more than 20 years for that dream to come true. But I want you to remember something and it's that Joseph in one day he went from being a prisoner to being married to Pharaoh's daughter and ruler over all of Egypt. And in a few months, he went from being an orphan alone in a strange land to having his father and brothers joining him in Egypt. So if you have been wa- like waiting on a dream or revelation for a few months or, or years, do not let it go. Because if it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 24, faithful is he who calls you and he also will bring it to pass. So don't let it go. Don't let it go. And then the last one, so remember that we have the lifestyle of intimacy, wisdom, and the last one is revelation. And with this one, I will finish. So the lifestyle of revelation. And something that I want you to understand is that um, is that revelation comes with intimacy, right? So when we surrender all, when we become intimate with the Holy Spirit, then revelation starts to come because revelation comes with intimacy and God wants us to hear his voice even more than we want to hear him and the way we hear him the way we think we hear his voice is through a relationship and each one of us can hear the voice of God you know John 10 27 we know that my sheep hear my voice so each one of us can hear the voice of God and Prophet Tommy always says this, there is no junior Holy Spirit. 
So our children can also learn to discern the voice of God. And this is part of the prophetic lifestyle, right? So you have all of these things that I gave you, but also part of the prophetic lifestyle is that you invite the Holy Spirit to speak to your family members and invite the Holy Spirit so our children can also learn to discern the voice of God. And something that I see is that children and teenagers, they get bored of church routine. They get bored of church routine. Why? Because like now that like the church nowadays, they don't have the voice, the, the voice of God attached to it. And they get bored of that because church routine, if it doesn't have God's voice attached to it, it becomes boring. Okay, so how, but how to make hearing the voice of God part of your day to day, part of your family, part of your life? How do you do that? So through a relationship with God and a relationship with God, as I said, intimacy, a worship, communion is essential to living a prophetic lifestyle. And we always need to be looking to God to see what he's saying about our circumstances. Whatever you are doing, you always need to ask the Holy Spirit. So instead of complaining about your circumstances, you should be prophesying into them. And you should be starting creating a prophetic lifestyle in your house, with your children, with your partner. You need to start asking your kids, what did you dream last night? What did you dream last night? And this is something that I have learned since, since I came to Rick Nation. And I, I trained my children. I trained my kids. My son is now seven. I started to train him when he was four. I started to invite him, come and pray with me. Because he needs to see the best advice that you can give to your children is your, is your example. It's not the Bible say you have to do this. No. No. It's your example. So with that example, I came to the process of God. You want to join me, guys? Come on in. They come to the room. I put worship music, and we start to wo- worship them. Now, they see me in the floor crying. They see me in the floor worshiping. Now they do that. They imitate. So they bow down. Even the little one, he's three. He, Mommy's worship time. And he comes in here, and he bows down, and he starts wor- worshiping. Why? Because of my example. So that's how you create a prophetic lifestyle with your children dreams every morning what do you dream do you dream something remember there is no junior holy spirit so the same spirit that was in jesus is in me and is in them right <laughs> so i ask them what do you dream do you dream something and a lot of warnings that god have gave me have come from my son that the lord have shown him something and he comes and he tells me mommy i dream this and i'm like oh let's pray and the lord gave me the revelation so we should be working together as a family we, we shouldn't be keeping the prophetic from them. Invite them. Invite them to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Invite them to have intimacy. When I have to go to, you know, because I have to go to Spain to preach or to... I tell him, you are going to stay here. Remember to put worship music. Tell Alexa. Alexa, put... No, Alexa, stop. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm Alexa here. Um, so remember to tell... Like that and uh, and, uh, and and tell her to put worship music and remember come and pray because I'm not gonna be there so you need to make sure that you keep the atmosphere in the house and that's what I do with him and that's what I'm now doing with my three year 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 old like ask him um, asking about intimacy asking about dreams asking about um, <clears throat> visions and I even do prophetic training with them and I, and, I, and I sit and I just say to him ask the Holy Spirit to give you a vision and he has drawn the amazing like visions that you can even imagine <laughs> yeah Alex I knows I don't want to say her name again let me bl- blow her actually okay fine and 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 that so I I just started to to do prophetic training and tell him, let's see it. Okay, I have something in my hand. Ask the Holy Spirit what it is. Remember, worship Jesus, asking Holy Spirit, what is mommy having in her hand? And right there, they are sitting. So that's how you start training your children in the prophetic, in have that intimacy, in the trusting. Now my son is going to school and he's raising his own army. He's calling it his army. And he's going there preaching Jesus, that doing deliverance, training one of his friends, and the other day he came really frustrated for a 
book day or book day or something that it was a few days ago in the school he came frustrated and he was like i keep telling my friend not to dress as harry potter i'm so frustrated and blah blah, blah. and i'm like but and i'm like but you can't for yes world book that yeah i'm like you can't force him and he was like no but i want him to be christian it's witchcraft it's harry potter and he was so frustrated and i'm like look you are doing your part trust the holy spirit you need to continue to be his friend but don't stop talking to him because you didn't want to talk to him anymore and i'm like i'm training him like look it's fine you can't force other people to do what, what, what you believe is right allow them to make their decision so he he knows now he knows about Halloween. He knows about what he can watch. Even my three-year-old comes and tell me, can I watch that? My three-year-old, the other day came and, and told me, that, mommy, that? And I'm like, okay, I didn't even know. They know, so you create that with your children. Don't wait for the world to, treat, to, to teach your children. Don't wait for Disney to train your children you have a, re a responsibility and you are going to be accountable for your children's soul not your te not the, their teachers uh -uh, yourself so you need to be the one putting time and effort to teach and train your children in hear the voice of god even now i told my son you know we believe in this men and women blah 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 in the, if they're teaching you something you don't agree with that you stay there you you don't have to argue or anything but don't allow that to confuse you you train your kids and that's how i'm doing it with my kids and i believe that that's what we should be doing as parents teaching them you are part of the world but you are not from the world i tell him you are a prophet you are consecrated you are the soul of god you one day you are going to become the mouth of god traveling to nations so it doesn't matter what other people say about you your identity is in jesus and that's how you raise and build up this this authority this identity this prophetic in your children that's how we should be doing it instead of like pulling them down and abusing them with words you are good for nothing and blah, blah blah what are we doing the enemy is using parents to destroy the children it's not using drugs it's not using that it's using us it's using us to destroy the next generation why because you haven't healed your old, your old traumas so now you are putting all those traumas and all of those frustrations in your children and now your children are growing up with rejection with emptiness going to the world on guns on drugs sexual immorality and now we are asking why my son is in the world i have been a christian for 30 years i consecrated why maybe as yourself maybe the enemy has used you has used you to br br break your children so now you need to you know and I don't even know why I'm saying this. I get passionate when I'm talking about children because I, I love children and teenagers and we should be putting more effort in our children. We shouldn't, we shouldn't look after them more because they are the next generation. They are the ones that we are gonna pass all of this to or maybe we are gonna work together. So that's why I believe that we need to um, look after our children and we need to make sure that we make the prophetic lifestyle something natural for them. Something like important, if your husband is unconverted, you need to create an atmosphere in your house. And stop saying to your husband, this is what the Bible say. No, and start showing your partner the prophetic. Prophesy to him, love him with your gift. Give people of your family, in your family, the revenge of love. Love through prophecy. And as you begin to serve with your gift, you will see how the Lord starts turning your family. And that's something, and I'm speaking from experience. When, my, when, like, when I was with my husband, I just started to have debates and arguments with him for hours. And I used to finish, Lord, but I'm defending you, I'm not allowing this, blah, blah, with Bible verse. You can even imagine the frustration. And I continued to like say to him, I, I need someone that's Christian, I need someone that needs to share the faith. But it was too late because we had already married. So what I was doing, I was damaging him by saying, I, I wish you were Christian, I wish you shared with me. So instead of like building him up, I was destroying him. Until the Lord told me, you don't need to defend me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he t t told me, like, love him with your gift. And that's exactly what I started to do. 
I started to share with him my dreams. Then he started to see that, you, you know, when I used to pray for people, people were crying, were reacting. I used to, oh, baby, look, I gave this prophecy to someone. Look, look, I share with him. And now he, he's like, oh, wow, there has to be something there. Like when I was doing deliverance on people and people, even me, oh, Julie, I feel this. this. He started to see that, you know, there was something different. So instead of me saying, uh uh, don't do that. Or because I used to throw his things because I didn't want, I want my house to be holy. And that was a mistake because you can't be throwing your partner's things or your children's things. They need to decide if they want, want to do it. But the Lord gave me another strategy that is that if they have things in the house that, you know, that could be like a course or an open portal, you blind and mute that demon so it doesn't manifest in your house. You have the power and the authority. So now you bind and mute and confuse that demon that comes through that in Jesus' name. Remove their, their power, remove their authority. They might have power, but they don't have authority. A witches and Satanists, they might have power, but they don't have authority. So that's why you remove their power in Jesus' name. So that was a strategy kind of like that the Lord has been showing me with um, in my house with my husband. So now, instead of me sitting having debates with him, I'm not saying marry someone that, you know, don't marry someone if it doesn't have your same beliefs, right? But this is what the Lord has kind of like trained me and taught me over these years. Now I share with him. I create this atmosphere with him. I pray for him, baby. You are the head and not the tail. The grace of God is upon your life. Whatever you got, you are blessed and you are going to get the best job and you are going to have the grace and blah, blah, blah. And start declaring and prophesying that. You need to, you know, attack them with the revenge of love. Not with hate, not with arguments, not with a prophesy over them. May the gift, may the prophetic become part of the lifestyle. Because remember, each one of you create the atmosphere in your house. Each one of you. If you have Jesus, you have the authority to create the atmosphere in your house. It doesn't matter what is moving in your house. So if you want to be a weak person and be there moaning and crying, oh, my husband is no Christian. I can't do this anymore, my children. No, you have authority. Stand right there and start changing the atmosphere in your house through the prophetic, through the Holy Spirit. Amen? Um, okay, I'm just going to finish with this. Ways in which we can see what the Father is doing. All right? Like, um, how can we hear God? What can we do? So, first one, hearing from God through our Bible reading and devotional time. Remember, you need to buy your own oil. Stop living in other people's revelation. Find your own revelation through you hearing from God, through your Bible, through your devotional life. Number two, walking and talking with the Father and receiving insights as to what His desires, plan, and purposes are. So remember that when we talk to God, it's not a monologue, it's a dialogue. So you can speak to Him and you can ask Him questions for Him to answer back to you. So we need to start having that intimacy knowing that it's not just me coming speaking 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 allow him to speak he wants to speak to you not just you bombarding him with a lot of things stay still and allow him to speak to you um then another way dreams visions prophetic songs so th those are the ways that we can see what the father is doing in heaven and he wants to release through dreams visions prophetic songs um also being aware of the holy spirit throughout the day not just when you are praying but every single day the holy spirit is there with you allow the holy spirit to speak to you through the day and then um yeah recognizing divine appointments when you have that urgency that you need to pray that urgency that you need to read the bible follow those that's the holy spirit the other day my son came and he told me i feel that we need to worship mommy i feel it really strong and I was like doing work and I'm like, oh baby, I'm, I have a lot of work to do, not now. And he was like, yes, I feel it, mommy, please. We came to the room and I had a beautiful encounter with the Holy Spirit. Those divine appointments, recognize those divine appointments where the Holy Spirit is uh, 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 talking to you. Amen. And something important that you need to understand, and with this I finish, is that you don't need to have a gift of prophecy to to live a supernatural lifestyle and hear God speaking to you like hearing from God and living in relationship with him is available to all of us living in the prophetic is available to each one of us amen 
and I just want us now to uh, pray. Um, if there's someone in here that is not Christian, please raise up your hand. I want to pray for you. If you are here um, and you are not Christian and you say, you know what, I want Jesus, I want this life, um, please feel free to write in the chat and raise up your hand. I will be more than happy to pray for you, even if you are on YouTube also and you say i just came in here by mistake <laughs> but i stay and now i want to save jesus <laughs> then um raise up your hand too and i would love to to pray for you but if not i just want us to to go into um a time of a time of just prayer and just um worship jesus and thank you for what he has done so thank you holy spirit we just give you thanks father for for everything that you have done tonight. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for what you have released, Father, tonight here on us. And Father, we just ask you that you open our spiritual eyes like never before, that you open our spiritual senses like never before, so we can see you, so we can hear you, so we can partner with your Holy Spirit and release what is on heaven here on earth. Holy Spirit, we just surrender all to you. We surrender our dreams. We surrender our life. We surrender every area of our life. And we know that it might be painful, but we just surrender all to you, Holy Spirit. And we just ask you that in this season, you guide us. That in this season, you train us. You show us. Be you our guide. Be you the one that guides us. And I just ask you, Holy Spirit, that you even connect families, children, husbands, wives, fathers, that you teach them how to work in unity, that you teach them how to have a prophetic lifestyle of intimacy, of surrendering all, of revelation, of wisdom. And Father, I just remove everything that has been trying to cover their spiritual eyes or the spiritual ears. Father, I remove that right now in Jesus' name. I break the veil, Father, right now. And I just declare, Father, that the light of Christ is coming, Father, in their eyes of their understanding, that, that they are going to have a better understanding of your word, a better understanding of your presence and what you are saying, Father, from heaven. Um, I just ask your Holy Spirit that you even teach us how to partner with heaven. Teach us how to partner with heaven. Teach us how to release what is on heaven on earth. Father, we pray also for Pastor Kesia, Father, and for the team, Father, that are going right now. Father, I just ask you that you release your angels, Father, with them right now. That you protect, Father, their entrance, their, their coming, their going. That you protect them, Father, that you send minister angels, that you even send angels of provision. Father, I just declare that in this season, Father, they are going to have angelic encounters like never before, that they are going to even see the angel of the Lord going around them, protecting them and defending them. And thank you, Jesus, because they are your feet and your hands there, Father, where you are taking them. I just declare that they are going to see the, 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 the power of Jesus in action, the love of Jesus, even healing and miracles. And thank you, Father, for what you are doing in their life. Father, thank you for their obedience, Father. Father, we just bless them right now and cover them with the blood of Jesus. And we just declare that every obstacle of the enemy, Father, is removed right now in Jesus' name. We bless them, Father. And thank you, Father, for what you have done tonight, Father. Surrender all to Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We worship you, Holy Spirit. I just want to pray for Ubi and Major. I don't know if Darian Kelly can please pin her. Ubi? Yes, you. Ubi and Major. Hi. Okay, let me just pin you. Thank you, Father, for your daughter, Father. Thank you, Father, for Ubi 
a major father thank you for for what you are doing father in her life father thank you father for the anointing that you have placed in her life thank you father for that revelation that you have deposited in her and thank you father because you have called her to be a kingdom warrior i hear the spirit of god saying daughter you are a kingdom warrior i have placed you to be my mouth there in your house and i, I even see you like you are kind of like the light of your family i see you like kind of like the one that intercedes for your family and i even see you like in a high place covering and interceding and kind of like doing warfare for your family thank you father for your daughter and for that warfare anointing that you have placed in her life and i hear the spirit of god saying daughter i am taking you into higher places i am taking you into a new level into a new place of intimacy and the spirit of god say daughter no more distractions stop looking to your right to your left because the spirit of god say in this season i am bringing vision i am bringing focus and the spirit of god say i am removing all distraction i am removing every plan of the enemy i am even bringing restoration i am even bringing healing self the spirit of god because for a season you thought that i was going for a season you thought that i was quiet but the spirit of god say daughter i am still in your boat i am still in your boat I am still in your boat. Father, thank you for your daughter. Father, I just release freedom in her house, freedom in her life. And thank you, Father, because you are in control. You are never too late. You are never too early, but you are always on time. And thank you, Father, because you are just on time in your daughter's life. Father, I just release your freedom in her life. In Jesus' name I pray. Father Lisa, are you there? Lisa Sakari, is that you? Yes. Hello. <laughs> Good morning, Lisa. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for the worship anointing, Father. Father, thank you for the worship anointing, Father. Thank you, Father, for that worship anointing, Father. Thank you, Father, for, 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 for that anointing. I see you as a worshiper. I see you as, you know, as, 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 as someone that when you open your mouth, I see like the Lord is pleased with your worship. The Lord is pleased with your heart. And I believe that the Lord is calling you to a place of intimacy again, a place of surrendering all again. Father, thank you, Father, for what you are doing, Father. Father, thank you for that intimacy. Father, thank you for that intimacy. Father, I just declare a new season, Father, a new season for Lisa, a new season, Father, for your daughter. And I hear the Spirit of God saying, Daughter, I am your provider. I am the one that is is going to give you the job. I am the one that is going to open the doors of the Spirit of God because the doors that I close, no man can open and the doors that I open, no man can close. So stop looking in the wrong places because I will open the door at the right time, says the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God say, I am even releasing new melodies in you. Even as you sleep, the Spirit of God say, I am releasing and the Spirit of God say, you have been thinking but i am actually a worshiper but i am actually this but the spirit of god say there is power in your mouth there is anointing in your in your mouth and the spirit of god say in this next season speak up because i'm going to release and break through as you speak says the spirit of god father thank you for your daughter thank you for what you are doing we just declare finances we just declare open portals we just declare father those doors that you are going to open those contract father the, that 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 job father and thank you father because your grace is upon her i just declare that wherever she goes everyone is going to see that there's something different in her and thank you father for the new 
anointing of worship and intimacy that you are placing in your daughter's life. And thank you, Father, because I even see even restoration around her father in relationships. Thank you, Father, because you are the one that breaks certain relationships, but you are the one that also restores. And I just, Father, declare and decree restoration around your daughter, Father. I just bless her right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Okay, Rinsha, is Rinsha here? Rinsha, are you here for us? I want to pray for you. Can you put your camera? Is that possible? Because I can't pin you if you don't put your camera on. I can't spotlight you. Okay, are you there? So I'm not gonna... Because it would be nice if you can put your audio too, so I can speak to you. I just wanna know if you are allowed to speak or not, because I wanna ask you a few questions. Okay, can you put your microphone at least? Okay, I want to ask you, Rinsha, has you, have you given your life to Jesus? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, so have you renounced the things that you mentioned? Have you renounced, um, have you repented for, you know, for doing like um, tarot, tai chi, horoscope, number readings? Have you repented for that? Have you renounced those things? Okay, so now let me pray for you. Father, thank you for your daughter, Father. And thank you, Father, for, for, for putting, Father, that repentance in her, Father. And Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I break the legal right that the enemy has over her life. I, I break the legal right, Father, that the enemy has, Father, over her. And I command every python spirit, Father, to leave her right now in Jesus' name. I command, Father, every kundalini spirit to leave her right now. I even command, Father, all the spirits, Father, that enter because of her practicing those things, Father, to leave. Every spirit of poverty right now to live in Jesus' name. Every spirit even of infirmity, I command you to live right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of death, destruction, and mental health issues, I command you to live her right now in Jesus name Father I just release your freedom Father in in, in um, Rinsha's life Father and I just declare Father that this is a new season for her a new season for her that she's gonna step in her in her full deliverance Father in this season Father I just bless her right now and I shut down Father the lies of the enemy is speaking in her mind I, I cut those words I cancel those words right now in Jesus name Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Wasn't that absolutely amazing? Julie, thank you so much. You've blessed us mm. tremendously. I've been catching people in the comments and stuff, and you are just blessing so many people. So thank you so much for your ministry and for your heart for intimacy with the lord and everything that he has shown you it's absolutely mm. beautiful mm. yeah um yeah, it's, it's just so powerful um there's so many things that you know i just um wrote here you know that god is longing for a prophetic generation and even mm. if there's nothing that you know you, you've not written down you know prophetic lifestyle intimacy wisdom revelation you know, I think that that's a takeaway, you know. So thank you so much, um, Prophetess Julie. That, that was just a timely word. And I'm sure so many people on here as well can, can you know, just um, just grab grabs it, you know. They, they, they let it go and let that be part of you, yeah. of your life. Um, so we're going to go into the time of giving, um, you know, um, offering now, you know, time of giving. 
And um, one thing that I also like to add is like, let giving be part of your prophetic lifestyle. Amen. Let giving be part of your prophetic lifestyle. So um, I'll read um, this uh, Bible verse, Luke 6, 38. I'm sure, you know, all of us are, are, are used to this verse. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Will be, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. The same measure. So I just want you to just, you know, like take a moment, you know, just ask Holy Spirit, you know, what to give tonight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I believe Holy Spirit will speak to you. And it's part of our lifestyle as well. So giving is part of our prophetic lifestyle. So I just want you to just take that moment and just, you know, ask Holy Spirit, prepare your offering. Um, I'm, they've put it in the in the chat and also on YouTube as well. I'm sure you'll be able to see the link um, on YouTube for those people on, in, on YouTube. And um, yeah, I'll just share a word of prayer. Father, thank you, Lord. We just thank you for all the, the offerings tonight, oh God. But I will ask, oh God, that you just, um, you know, speak into us, oh God. Father, we ask, oh God, that everything that has been brought into your house or storehouse tonight, Father, we ask that you accept our offering, oh God. Accept all the substance, oh God. Accept all our, our giving tonight, oh God. Father, we pray, oh God, for, for people that are on here, even on YouTube, that they believe in you, God, for things, oh God, that they've been, they've been just been, you know, in the place of prayer. Father, we ask, oh God, Lord, let this be an open door for them, oh God. Let it be an open heaven, oh God, for them, oh God. Father, we pray that you release your blessings over them, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, and we pray that this will be the, the offering that's been given will be to advance your kingdom on earth, oh God. Father, we just Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If I can just um, invite Pastor Hade, uh, if you can just um, bless us with, um, you know, thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Hade. Thank you so much, Prophet Julie, for just that word about surrender. It's not the prettiest. Oh, you've gone a bit quiet, Pastor Hade. Can you hear me? Can you hear no. me? No, no, no. Move closer. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Better. It'd be better. Yeah. It'd be better. How about here. now? Can you hear me? We're still the lowest, I think, of everybody still who's been on. So, yeah, if you could. Cool. I'm yeah. not sure of that. Better. Yeah. better. Much better. Cool. Thank you. All right. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, thank you so much for that word. Um, surrender and, you know, living that life of um, the prophetic is not always easy. But um, there is grace that comes with it when we say yes. Amen. So, um, amen. We bless your name, Jesus, for that word. Thank you, Lord. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. With holding nothing, I surrender all to you, Lord. Everything I give to you, with holding nothing, with holding nothing. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away all oh, to you, Lord. I give myself away so you can use me take me to that place lord to that secret place where i can be with you you can make me like you take me to that place lord to that secret place 
place where I can be with you and you can make me like you wrap me in your arms wrap me in your arms lord wrap me in your arms oh lord wrap me in your arms uh, wrap me in your arms oh lord wrap me in your arms i surrender all i surrender all to you and everything i give to you oh lord with hope nothing with holding nothing lord i i surrender the all to you and everything i give to you with holding nothing with holding nothing Thank you, Pastor Ade. Wow, what a powerful evening we mm. have had, right? So, so amazing. Mm. So once again, thank you to Pastor Ade for leading us in such tremendous worship. And thank mm. you for Prophetess Julie for mm. such a great teaching and for being so transparent mm. and giving us that good news of relocation. Mm -hmm. And so just in closing, um, I just want to make you aware of, well, I'm not gonna list everything that's going on through RIG because there's so much to get involved in, but what you can do is go to Tomi Arayami um, Instagram, right, at to Tomi Arayami, um, and also get, visit at RIG London, we have our own official Instagram page as well. And you'll find both in the top bio, there will be a link called Linktree. And that opens up to all the possible events that are happening during the week. So we've got various things going on, like uh, other live streaming. I think we've still got Pioneers Church going on. We have prayer Wednesday morning. Uh, we have prayer through all different times during the um, during the week. So rather than me just sit here and read a list of things, go and check that out. And yeah, let's just close in prayer. Let's just thank the Lord and um, and bless Him. So first of all, I just want to say let's pray as well for Prophetess Julie and just pray for all the amazing things that God has for her. We just lift her up to you, Father God. We just thank you for the gift that you've given her. Thank you for the insight that she provided tonight. And Lord God, I pray that in her next steps, in the next stages to her growth and relocation and for her whole family, I thank you for their own revelation on this. And that, Lord, that you will provide every yeah. single step of the way, that you will bring those resources to yeah. her, that you will um, give her everything that she needs. Yeah. And that, Father God, we just pray for her husband. We pray that his eyes are open to you in his own way yeah. very soon, Lord. Yeah. We thank you for the boys. Yeah. Just thank you that they have learned so much through her. Yeah. May they continue to grow and yeah. be a little army in their own schools, yeah. in their own circles, Father. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely amazing yeah. of what they're doing. So thank you, Lord, for, yeah. um, for all the things that you are doing there. And may South America be yeah. blessed. Amen. May it be set on fire Amen. like yeah. never before. May she you have even greater testimonies so when she comes to to speak again that we would just be so on fire we're just like oh my gosh i can't believe the things that the lord is doing and lord god i pray for every single person that has joined us in zoom and on youtube this evening we just thank you for their burning hearts we thank you for their desire to just come 
continue to meet uh, with us all and to meet with you, Father God. We just pray that as we go into this week, that you will continue to give us dreams and visions. And may we even have that desire even deeper to spend more time in intimacy with you. Make us more love, loving like you are, Father God. Teach us what true love really is, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for all the things that you are going to do, that even if we can't see it, feel it, taste it, sense it that lord god we have faith that you, the things that you have promised will come to pass in jesus mighty name all for your glory we thank you jesus for all the things that you have done in jesus mighty name all these things come to pass amen amen, amen. amen. thank you everybody for joining us uh, we will see you again next week sunday uh, <laughs> At the count it. of three, we're gonna say get rig. Get rig. Get rig. Oh, God bless you all. You guys. Bless you guys. Bless you guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you.